In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the ACI simulator. This is a handy tool that simulates an ACI environment, which is, of course, good for the CCMP data center and also CCIE labs. It used to be a restricted tool, but recently at the beginning of the year, Cisco decided to open up to anyone who has access, so you're free to download this. From our Cisco page, we just need to type in APIC and then select the ACI simulator. Now there are two types of installs. There's the ISO, this is meant for the hardware appliance, and then there is OVAs that are released. Though they do it a bit strangely compared to other things there, what they do is they release it in five parts because it's a quite a large OVA file, and then we have to combine them with the cat command. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to download each of these. And as usual, I'll pause the video here because I don't think you want to watch a bunch of downloads happening. I'll see you when we're done. Okay, so that took about an hour for me to download the 40 gigs of OVA files. And now that I have them, what I need to do is combine them into one. So what I can do is the cat command. So what I can do is the cat command and put that into a single OVA. Okay, now that's done, I can have a look at it with the ls command, and we can see that it is a 42 gig OVA now. So now, all I need to do is open up my OVA. And I'm just going to import this into my VMware Fusion, so I'm just going to call this APIC01, and save it. This will take a bit of time, so I'm just going to pause it. Okay, so that's done. You can see that this solution is going to be using 16 gig of RAM and 8 CPUs, so it, it does take a fair amount of resources to run, but it is better than trying to get a physical lab for an alternative. And then for the networking, I'm just going to go ahead and customize the settings. And I'm just going to set this to suit my environment, which is 310 here. All right, with that done, I can go ahead and boot this. As I mentioned before, um, the earlier versions of this, you actually had to get a special code from uh, Cisco to let the VM boot. But at the beginning of the year, they removed that so that anyone can download this to play with. So that was nice enough. So when this boots, it's going to start up the setup wizard. And the feature of um, the simulator, if you want to call it a feature, is that uh, it's not going to save the configuration state. So every time I shut down the simulator, it's going to wipe out the configuration. So you can always have a fresh lap just by rebooting it. This also means that if you wanted to keep your lab around, then you want to get in the habit of suspending your virtual machine if, or just keeping it up and running if it's a reliable environment. Okay, so here's the wizard. You can name things uh, however you want. I'm just going to accept the default. And things like the fabric ID and how many active controllers are fine there, but for our purposes, one controller is fine. Pod 1 is fine. We're not going to get fancy with the standby controllers or anything. And we can name it what we want. I'm just going to call it APIC01. Now the pool addresses and the VLAN are kind of irrelevant because there's not going to be an actual Nexus underlay for these IP addresses to matter. So I would just accept the defaults unless your particular lapping calls for you to change the subnet. We don't need IP version 6, but you can use it. And then we do need to get this an IP address we can reach, so I'm just going to call this 1030 10 
Oh, I don't know, 77 slash 24. Dot one is my gateway. Let's go ahead and accept strong passwords, or if you want a simple lab, you can go ahead and say no to that. And if we're happy, just say no. If you uh, reflexively say yes, it's just going to start the wizard over again on you. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video for a bit and the install is going to finish and then uh, the APIC uh, processes have to start up. So probably about five minutes from now is when we'll have a look at the web interface. Okay, so our APIC simulator is ready to rock and roll. Go ahead and sign in with your username and password that you set. And then uh, I don't want to go too deep into APIC because this is a very deep uh, topic there. So what we're just going to do is go ahead and close the wizard. And I'm just going to show you how to get things initialized. So what you want to do is click on Fabric. And then go down to Fabric Membership. And then Nodes Pending Registration. We're going to see our first leaf here. And what we want to do is right click and go Register. We want to give it a node ID, I like to call it 101, and then the leaf name I just like to call leaf 101. Not going to bother with any rack stuff, so we're just going to say register. And what's going to happen is the APIC is going to discover the simulated um, leaf switch, and then from there it should realize that there's a spine connected to it and then another leaf. So we'll just let this sit for a minute, and we can see that it has discovered a spine switch. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing and say register. I just like to call this 103 because that's what it discovers as here. And say 103 and then go register. And then we just got to wait a little bit longer until the leaf switch pops up. And there's our last switch. So once again, we'll register. So once again, we'll just do 102 for this leaf and call it 102 and go register. So while that's figuring things out, we can actually look at the topology here. So in the topology, we can see a representation of the ACI network as discovered. So right now we see our leaf switch, our spine switch, and our APIC controller. And once the discovery is done, we should eventually see 102 pop up in here. While we're waiting, this is a mostly featured um, ACI simulator. So you can do pretty much everything that you can do on a real APIC controller. However, the main issue is that there is no underlay there, so obviously you won't be able to do any peering with like a layer 3 out or a layer 2 out or actually add an ESX server. However, you can go ahead and add in like a vCenter if you wanted to play with the orchestration. And part of the reason why I installed this on my laptop is because this is really handy for just having a an APIC uh, that you can boot up there and then if you wanted to do some automation stuff for DevNet or you're doing some CCIA study and you just want to, it's uh, convenient to have it handy with you anywhere you go. This is also handy if you want to tie into things like UCS Director or any kind of orchestration stuff on the Cisco curriculum or other vendors curriculum and it's just pretty good test beds. Just keep in mind that there is no actual underlay there so uh, you won't be able to actually see the OSPF routes. So anyway, this is where I'll leave the video. Uh, the point was just to show you how easy it is to get this up and running. And then when we talk deeper into DC topics later on or for the DevNet automation stuff, it's uh, easy to go back to this video to get this up and running on your own lab. All right, I'll see you next time.